The Bravdi Nagian Builders presents an indoor navigation solution for the blind. Five middle school girls standing side by side, one girl holding prototype of white cane with smartphone strapped to arm, cardboard model of hallway and ba public bathroom in front, containing RFIDs on floor. Imagine you're blind in the mall. Your friends have a good idea where they want to go, so you follow them, having no idea what you're passing. Imagine you're blind in the airport. Your flight is delayed by a couple or so hours and you want to get up and do something. Imagine you're blind in the restroom. Imagine you're in a public restroom and have no idea where anything is. We got these scenarios from interviewing Chris Cook from the Oregon Commission for the Blind and from online research. At this point, we decided we wanted, we were going to help the blind navigate unfamiliar spaces indoors. Um, after seeing these scenarios, we brainstormed ideas to help the blind navigate unfamiliar spaces and came up with the idea of creating invisible signs. With our solution, a blind person would walk through a mall and be informed what stores they are passing, or be informed about the layout of a public bathroom, or be able to leave the airport gate with confidence and walk around independently. Okay, we've come up with a, a unique and innovative system called Vienna, which stands for Visually Impaired um, Electronic Navigational Assistant, um, that does just that. Included in our system uh, are our white canes, which we've designed, that gathers information through RFIDs in the ground, which tells, us, tells the position of a person in relation to surrounding objects. Our device tells the user information through audio. The cane that we designed acts as an antenna extender for a phone's built-in RFID meter. The phone would be running on an app created by us, which would vibrate the phone notifying the user of available information. If the user wants that information, they press a button on the app to hear it in the format of an audio message. Types of RFIDs that we use in our system. Our first type of RFID is location ID. This RFID is a unique number that represents its location relative <laughs> to dictionary ID. The dictionary ID contains the translations of the location IDs to words. The third kind of RFID is the standalone ID, which identifies non-directional information. The software component of our cane is an app that we made using MIT's App Inventor tool, which uses a scratch-like programming language. The programming model is event-driven, where we use two events, the NFC reader event and the button press event. Our, NF our NFC event handler understands three kinds of IDs that Arby just described. Its job is to create a helpful message in text um, form using data it receives from the RFID tags. It also buzzes the phone after the message is created. Our button press handler is responsible for translating the message that the NFC reader handler created into an audible message that the user can hear. In terms of user interface, we tried to keep it as simple as possible. It only has one very large button that a uh, large one that the user can press after the phone vibrates indicating an available message and it doesn't require any manual configuring. This is a prototype of our Vienna cane. It is connected to a phone that is running the app that Malia just described. Let's, and this is a model of a hallway and restroom. Let's see how it works coming from this direction. Imagine Samara is walking down this hallway. Samara passes over location ID area. Samara passes over dictionary ID area. It just vibrated, letting me know that it has information available. I'm going to press the button on the screen. Room 102 to the left. Now I'm going to try it from the opposite direction. Samara taps location ID area coming from the opposite side. Smear taps dictionary ID. It just vibrated. I'm going to press the large button. Room 102 to the right. Oh, as you can see, even though she's coming from the opposite side, it gives her the correct info. This is how we imagined using these RFIDs navigating the restroom. Smear passes over um, independent ID area in front of the restroom. It just vibrated. I'm going to press the button. Trash can. Towels, baby changing station straight ahead. Two sinks, three stalls, and one ADA stall to the right. Now this is how we imagined using these RFIDs navigating the sink area. Smear passes over independent ID by the sink. Um, it just vibrated, and so I'm going to press the button. Two sinks in front of you. Sink is between the sinks. The trash can is on the wall behind you. Paper towels directly above the trash. We have come up with two experiments to prove to ourselves that we have a good solution. The first test we have is the Yuck Touch test. 
In this test, a person goes around the bathroom blindfolded and has to sit on the toilet and wash their hands. We recorded each time the person touched something. Then we did the same experiment with the simulated version of our cane navigation system and compared the results. In our second test, we challenged a person to walk down a hallway past other rooms to find one specific room. We timed the blindfolded person with and without a solution. Then we examined the final times on each test and compared them. Our results were that with our cane, it took 20% less time and 60% less touches. Cost analysis. Altogether, the Vienna cane cost $26.56, including the white cane for $11.99, the USB port for $3, the wire for $0.60, and the phone holder for $10.97. We estimated the cost for the amount of RFIDs per linear foot for $6. Thank you for listening to our presentation. Questions, comments, or concerns? Exactly.